Well, good evening and welcome to all of you. Welcome to the California Museum and welcome to the opening of this extraordinary exhibit with Malice Toward None, the Abraham Lincoln Bicentennial Exhibition. I'm Nancy McFadden and I'm a member of the Board of Directors here, so let me welcome you as a member of the Board and let me particularly welcome the 125 new members of the museum that are here tonight. Thank you for joining and uh, may this be the start of a beautiful friendship. I'm also here to welcome you as somebody who works for Pacific Gas and Electric, who's the lead sponsor of this exhibit. And let me tell you how proud and honored we are to have a part in bringing this extraordinary exhibit about an extraordinary man to Sacramento and our California Museum. We're joined as, we're the lead sponsor of the exhibit, but we're joined by several other sponsors, and I just want to let you know who they are so that you can thank them as well. First of all, and you'll hear from somebody from Union Pacific, who's the national sponsor of the exhibit. Locally, PG&E is joined by Wells Fargo, Motorola, Comcast, and Pacific Coast Building Materials. So let's thank all of those local sponsors. You know, this exhibit about this extraordinary man, Abraham Lincoln, is really so relevant today. This man has been, has been so pivotal to our nation and certainly was brought more into the consciousness of Americans by our current president, President Obama, who talked about him during the election and it talks to him to, about him today from the White House. He talks about the man's words and his actions, his values and his qualities. And he said, President Obama did about President Lincoln, that what he admired most was that Lincoln never forgot, not even in the midst of civil war, that despite all that divides us, north and south, black and white, that we were at heart one nation sharing a bond as Americans that could bend but would not break. How relevant those words are today, how relevant it, that it is that we have this extraordinary exhibit in California for all of us and our children to see. Now exhibits like this don't happen on their own and I must say that we have an extraordinary staff here at the California Museum led by our executive director Claudia French and the deputy director and curator of the exhibit Amanda Meeker and John O'Connor who always seems to pull it together and pull events like this together beautifully for the museum. I also want to thank Elisa Okilo Odongo on my staff who really helped to make tonight possible. Thank you, Elisa. Now, I have to say that there's one other person without whom we would not be here tonight, without whom there would be no California Museum. Our amazing First Lady, Maria Shriver, saw a moribund, near-bankrupt museum and turned it into the only museum in the nation that had an exhibit that honored remarkable women of California. She turned it into a museum that was the only museum west of the Mississippi that showed the Declaration of Independence on a select tour around the country. And tonight, she's helped to turn it into a museum that is the only museum or place in the Western United States that has this incredible Lincoln exhibit. The First Lady did this because she's a person of imagination and wisdom and creativity who sees possibilities where others don't. And then she adds a little courage and determination and tenacity and kind of that can-do attitude. So she turns those possibilities into realities. And then she adds a little dose of humor and passion and joy to make us all want to go on her improbable journeys with us, with her. So I am very, very proud and honored to introduce a woman who made the California Museum possible, and I consider a good friend, Maria Shriver, our amazing First Lady. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. My honor. Thank you. I just want to uh, say a thing about Nancy. Um, Nancy, as she introduced herself as a board member and as the lead sponsor, you made this 
exhibit happen because it wouldn't have gotten up if we hadn't been able to have the money. And when I became interested in this museum five and a half years ago, I went to Nancy and asked her to help me. And um, I pleaded with her to help me. And she did. And she stepped in when nobody else would. And she worked with me and with everybody on this uh, museum to help it come to this place. And in the process, uh, we found that we shared our hearts and our journeys and um, our friendship grew and blossomed from there. And um, it is a deep friendship for me and one that I value and depend on. And her heart is in this museum, but if you're lucky enough to have her as your friend, uh, you know her heart is with you. And uh, I was so happy that uh, yesterday, uh, we, for the very first time here in California, began the Governor and First Lady's Medals for Service, honoring individuals who had exemplified service in their lives to this state, making it a better state. And we chose one company that had set a standard for service in this state, and we chose PG&E. Uh, because uh, under Nancy's direction and all the people in that company, they give and they give and they give. And wherever you go in this state, you will find volunteers from this company. It's part of their culture, it's part of their legacy, and um, it's really extraordinary. So I was so happy that they were honored yesterday, um, and uh, I'm so happy that you're here believing in this exhibit and that you're my friend, so thank you. Um, I, uh, <laughs> Arnold just said, only women talk like that. Um, might be a page uh, to pay attention to. Anyway, but uh, it's a separate speech, separate uh, thing. But anyway, um, I'm here to introduce him. So uh, not to talk about Lincoln, but I find it so interesting. Everybody here is going to talk about Lincoln. But I think it's so interesting to take note of the title of this exhibit, with na malice towards none. What an ideal to conduct one's life along, with malice towards none. And I think it's so interesting to go through this exhibit and learn about a man who was self-taught, who had self-doubt, and who was able to grow and transform and become the leader he was because of those things. So I think it's really interesting when we look at leaders in our country today to remember that they are men and women who have hearts and who have a conscience and who also have self-doubt and who look to grow and transform. And us as people, uh, the challenge is to have malice towards none and to allow them to evolve and grow and become great leaders because that's what uh, this nation did with Abraham Lincoln and look how better off we are. So um, I think that's always worth noting because sometimes we get impatient and we have malice. And um, I just think that's worth thinking. That's what I thought of when I went through this exhibit. Um, but I want to thank all of you for being here. This has been part of a membership drive to help grow the family of this museum. I think we've gotten a couple hundred new members uh, geared around this exhibit, and we need many, many more. This is a great honor for this museum, so I want to take a moment to thank all of you who signed up to be members and to be part of the museum family and community. And I would ask you to pass along uh, the word about this jewel here in Sacramento and ask your friends to join it and support it because it is only that way that we bring exhibits like this, whether it's from the Smithsonian, which is such a great honor, uh, whether it's the great American, Native American basket collection that is on display, whether it's about women, whether it's about the Hall of Fame or the Minerva, all of these exhibits get to go up there and they get to educate all the thousands and thousands of young children who come through this museum. And the lessons they learn from this museum are funded by people like Nancy and so many other great companies that are here to support uh, this museum. So thank you for supporting it. Please pass along the word. I'm a big believer in passing it on. Um, and uh, we will not rest until 38 million people are members of this museum. Um, so we have our work cut out for us. But I want to thank them for helping us get it going with the Lincoln uh, exhibit. So his legacy is helping us out today. And um, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, the governor of the great state of California. Uh, this is his um, bust here 
of Lincoln. It uh, was done by the great sculptor Robert Burks, who uh, did the bust of President Kennedy in the um, Kennedy Center. And um, he does extraordinary work. And uh, Lincoln sits in Arnold's office. And uh, I think you look at him a lot and um, think about him and think about uh, what he went through. Um, and um, I think all great leaders think about him and what he went through and what he became. So thank you for bringing this over. Thank you for, you're welcome. oh, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, the, and uh, he talked about a house divided and a house united and all kinds of stuff that we can relate to. But um, anyway, uh, so I want to thank Arnold for supporting this museum. That's a different speech, different crowd too. So I have so many different speeches. But anyway, um, and I want to thank you so much for supporting this museum and all the exhibits that come here. We always ask Arnold to come over and meet the sponsors and thank them. And he does so always very happily and always to meet the great staff that Nancy mentioned that keep this museum going day in, day out. So it is my pleasure uh, to introduce your governor, a man who understands leading in a difficult time and uh, who is a proud supporter of this museum and a proud defender of the state of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, thank you very much, Maria, for the nice introduction. The wonderful things you said, you all heard it. Uh, but anyway, I, we are here today to celebrate um, a great leader. And we're talking here about uh, someone that has been, uh, or is, a hero to millions of people, great public servant, smart as hell. Well, it's enough talking about myself. Uh, let's, oh, let's talk about the, uh, <laughs> President Lincoln. But uh, now, anyway, uh, all jokes aside, I think that I want to say, first of all, thank you very much to Maria, uh, because this doesn't uh, happen by itself. I mean, Maria has been such a great, great uh, advocate of this museum and has uh, done such a great job in the last five years as First Lady to build up this museum and to make it what it is today, and also to have so many interesting exhibits. So I want to say thank you very much for being such a great First Lady and also such a great, great hard-working person for this great museum. Let's give her a big hand for the, all the great work that she's been doing. I also want to say thank you very much uh, uh, to the staff of the museum for putting this uh, exhibit together. And of course, I want to thank also the sponsors. If it is Union Pacific, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Jim Young, who is the CEO of Union Pacific, then Peach and &E. We want to thank uh, Nancy McFadden and Fels Wells Fargo and Motorola, Comcast, Pacific Coast, and uh, Building uh, Building Materials. Uh, they are all just some of the major sponsors, and someone has to pay, of course, for all of this to bring it here. So we want to thank them all. Uh, let's give them a big hand again for the great participation. Now, what a privilege it is to, to be here tonight and to kick off this very, very special exhibit. Uh, uh, for the next nine weeks, uh, we will have uh, kids and families and visitors uh, from far and wide and from all over the state of California and even America coming together here in this wonderful California Museum uh, to go and to uh, see this unprecedented uh, exhibit and get a glimpse into the life of America's 16th president. I have a, a sculpture, as Maria said, in my office and I, because I'm a big admirer of Lincoln and I look at that sculpture every day and I get inspiration from that, just looking at it and thinking about what this man has accomplished and what he has done for this great country. Uh, Lincoln, of course, is not only an inspiration to me, he is an uh, inspiration to so many others who have achieved the American dream or striving for the American dream. He was a self-made man and he rose uh, from humble beginnings. Uh, many people don't know, but Lincoln uh, had only 18 months of formal schooling. And the great thing about this exhibit is that we have actually the grammar book up there displayed that Lincoln used to teach himself how to read and how to write. Uh, you can see also a very rare copy of the Emancipation Proclamation. And also you can see the Bible that the President Lincoln used uh, uh, when he was sworn in at his inauguration, and also the same Bible that President Obama used in his inauguration. 
and there are so many other treasures from the Library of Congress. Uh, it's really, like I said, the most extraordinary exhibit. But to me, however, this exhibit is about much more than just artifacts and objects. Uh, it is a reminder of a great triumph in the darkest days of America's young history. More than 600 Americans perished in that Civil War. But Abraham Lincoln would not accept the nation and its people divided. Uh, he would not accept defeat. As a matter of fact, Lincoln and his army were guided and strengthened by the fierce belief in this country's founding ideals, liberty, justice, and equality for all. Because of Lincoln, America survived and persevered. It became stronger and more prosperous. And today, our nation once again faces great challenges. But I can tell you this, anyone who comes to this exhibit will see where America has been and what we have overcome. And if we can make it through the Civil War, then we can literally make it through anything. Our stock market goes up and down, our economy goes up and down, but our ideals have never changed. And that is what makes this the greatest and the freest nation on earth. 200 years after Lincoln's birth, his words and his ideas are still uh, revered and recited. Lincoln reminds us that we are all connected by our land and also by our liberty, and that America's ideals are worth fighting for. So that, to me, is Lincoln's greatest legacy. And that is why I'm so proud and why I'm so happy that we have this uh, museum here and that we have this great exhibit here so that many, many people can come here and learn more about the 16th president. So thank you very much for being here. And now I want to hand the mic over again to our great MC, Nancy McFadden. Please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor. I wanted to acknowledge our Secretary of State, Deborah Bowen, who was here earlier. I think she's still here. And you see we're in the Secretary of State's building, gorgeous courtyard with these words that mean so much and would mean so much to Abraham Lincoln. And so I wanted to acknowledge Secretary Bowen and thank her for her generosity and support of the museum as well. It's now my honor to introduce Dr. John Sellers, who is the historical specialist on the American Civil War and the Lincoln curator at the Library of Congress, from which so much of this exhibit came. Dr. Sellers began his career at the library in June 1969, working first with the locating and identifying manuscript sources in the library on the American Revolution, and then turned to Abraham Lincoln. We are so honored to have the Lincoln expert with us. So honored to have somebody from the Library of Congress who made this exhibit possible. And I'm sorry, Dr. Sellers, that I can't talk about my deep friendship with you, but I will introduce you as somebody we're so proud to have here in Sacramento at the opening of this extraordinary Lincoln exhibit, Dr. John Sellers. The head of the National Commission on Abraham Lincoln described this exhibit <clears throat> as the centerpiece of the Abraham Lincoln Bicentennial Commission. Now Lincoln built his life on principle. What you are showing your respect for and your admiration of are principles lived out under very trying circumstances, expressed in writings like the first inaugural, the second inaugural address, the farewell address, the Emancipation Proclamation, and so forth. But you're also seeing a man who said of the White House experience, if there's a worse place than hell, I'm in it. He got little joy. It was bloodshed and death, even his own 11-year-old son in his first year of office a wife so distraught over the loss of two of her sons that Lincoln had great difficulty consoling her. So he is a man of sorrows, but a man who put his nation and his people before himself. He got little relief from the strain of office except in the theater, which proved the source of his own death. I have the deepest admiration, having lived among the documents 
read them over and over, and I know of no American that I more admire than Abraham Lincoln. Now, I want to introduce to you the executive officer, CEO of Union Pacific Railroad, Mr. Jim Young. The one thing I would say about him is when I tried to compliment Jim <clears throat> on the contribution of Union Pacific, he cast that aside, saying we would do this for the principles espoused by Abraham Lincoln. Good evening, everybody. I'm going to make this real brief. I think it's a little warm out there, and I'm hoping uh, we have someone over that's okay. But uh, uh, listen, you may want to uh, look at the history books and see why uh, I'm so proud that Union Pacific is a national sponsor for President Lincoln. Uh, back in 1862, President Lincoln had a vision. That vision was to connect America. He uh, uh, enacted what was called the Pacific Rail Act 19, in 1862. He started my company, Union Pacific Railroad, in Omaha, Nebraska, 147 years ago. Historians today look at that vision as important then as the Internet is today in our, in our world. Uh, you all know the story. Central Pacific started here in Sacramento. Union Pacific started in Omaha. They connected in Promontory Point, Utah. And uh, it's been an honor for me to lead this, comp this company uh, for my career. Uh, I think railroads are as important today as they were, were then. You all know the stats. Uh, uh, you think about energy efficiency. I want you to think about this. One ton, 450 miles, one gallon of diesel. That's the equivalent of you getting about 400 miles per gallon in your vehicle. So railroads today, when you think about energy efficiency, you then think about emissions, uh, you think about safety, are, are the choice for American or, or as important as ever going forward here. On behalf of uh, the 50,000 employees that work for Union Pacific in the 23 states and the thousands of customers, it's an honor for us to be the national sponsor. And uh, Governor Schwarzenegger, thank you for your support out here in California. Thank you, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, First Lady Maria Shriver, Governor Schwarzenegger, Dr. Sellers, and Jim. Thank you so much, Jim Young. The exhibit is open. Go inside. It's air-conditioned. Thank you all for being here. <laughs>